In this video, I will compare the new Intel i5, i7 and i9 12th gen versus 11th and 10th gen processors in gaming benchmarks as well as professional tasks such as photo and video editing, coding and many more. Oh, and FYI, 12th gen CPUs currently suffer from poor reliability in gaming. I will explain what exactly is going on with that for both Windows 10 and Windows 11 users. It is a pretty big deal, so I recommend you don't skip that part. Before that, buy your Windows 10 license for less at cdkoffers.com using the link in the description below. Use code IV20 for an additional 20% off and safely check out with PayPal for instant delivery. As of recording this video, 12th gen processors still suffer from one pretty significant issue on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. DRM software integrated into some games does not work properly with Intel's new CPUs, resulting in random crashes, making gaming experience on all 12th gen systems unpleasant. Intel published a list of games where this issue has been identified and a fix is on the way. However, I suspect that there are a lot more titles affected by this problem. Also, I would like to bring your attention to the fact that most of the games on this list are quite new. So, good luck getting a fix for one of the old games in your library, if it suffers from this issue. In the meantime, motherboard manufacturers created a workaround to fix this problem at its source. The solution is not elegant, nor is it user-friendly. It involves manually disabling eCores on your 12th gen CPU. So, you will face the dilemma of either switching eCores on and off every time you want to play an affected game, or turning them off permanently, sacrificing multi-threading performance in other apps. So far, Gigabyte did the best job addressing this issue by creating a DRM fix tool that can turn eCores on and off in Windows with a single click. No need to enter BIOS. Hopefully, other manufacturers will create something similar for their motherboards as well. By the way, if you will be using your 12th gen PC just for gaming, then you should consider turning eCores off permanently, because as discovered by Hardware Unboxed, they are not useful in games at all. FYI, 11th and 10th gen processors do not have such problems. Everything works reliably as it should. With that out of the way, let's talk about benchmarks. The tests were done using Windows 11 and DDR4 memory. If you are wondering about DDR4 versus DDR5 performance difference, on average it is almost the same. DDR5 wins in some benchmarks and then loses in others. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a dedicated video exploring these differences in detail. In Cinebench single core test, i5 12600K destroyed Intel's previous flagship i9 11900K. It is 15% faster. 12900K leads by even more with 18% improvement over its 11th gen predecessor. Cinebench multi core test reveals just how much better the new CPUs are. 12900K is almost two times better than 11900K, and i5 12600K puts 11900K to shame by scoring 12% higher in multicore. I should explain the Premiere Pro results. 12700K managed to score higher than 12900K despite having fewer cores. Most likely it is just an optimization issue that will be fixed later. But it is what it is right now, another small reliability problem. Most of the professional benchmarks follow the same trend. i5 12600K is as good or better than i9 10900K and 11900K processors. Taking that into consideration, photo, video, coding and 3D creatives on a tight budget should consider getting an i5 12600K. It is powerful enough to do serious work. By the way, links to buy any CPU featured in this video are in the description below. Honestly, if you need a new processor for work, then I would go with a 12th gen model that fits your budget because they are just so much better than previous generations. That is unless you find an amazing deal on 10th or 11th gen platform that makes it much cheaper than 12600K. i7 12700K is a level up. It is 3 to 30% better than 12600K depending on the app. i9 12900K is in a league of its own. It is 5 to 20% better than 12700K. 
Looking at the 362 watts total system power consumption in Blender, it becomes clear that Intel pushed 1200K to its limits to achieve such a superior performance. A massive cooler is a must-have with this one. In sharp contrast, i5-12600K at 217 watts is impressively efficient, considering that it beats previous generations of i9 processors in performance. Total system power consumption difference during gaming is much smaller. 12900K PC was drawing just 67 watts more from the wall compared to 12600K. Let's move on to the gaming benchmarks. Looking at the 10-game average FPS, it is crystal clear that 12th gen is significantly better in gaming as well. However, you should not forget that these results are the best-case scenario, as the benchmarks were done at 1080p resolution using a high-end RX 6900 XT graphics card. The performance difference will be much lower if you use a less powerful GPU or increase the resolution. It is very well reflected in GPU-intensive games such as Cyberpunk 2077 and Guardians of the Galaxy, where there is very little difference even at 1080p because graphics card is just not powerful enough to take advantage of the faster processes. In some other games that are not GPU bottlenecked, it is very impressive to see that the minimum FPS of 12th gen processors is equal to the average FPS 11th and 10th gen can produce. High refresh rate monitor owners will be pleased. This is the biggest generation of our generation performance improvement we have seen from Intel in many, many years. We have AMD to thank for forcing Intel to change. I am sure that we will see the same pace of growth and innovation from both companies in the future. Minus the reliability problems, of course. By the way, AMD is getting ready to launch new CPUs soon. Check out this video where I take a look at the upcoming Ryzen 6000 series versus Intel 12th gen. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. It was I, Vadim, until next time.